Hi, welcome back to the Our First Home series. I'm Kennedy, and today we're gonna have a very special guest. <laughs> it's Danny, DIY Danny. No problem, Bob. I'm sure you guys miss her on the channel, so let's welcome her back. Clap. <laughs> welcome back, Danny. <laughs> We're gonna be talking about how she's moving into her first home that she actually bought with her partner and we're gonna be talking about DIYs, any advice she has for me, and maybe talking about some mistakes that I made. And it's gonna be really fun, so let's do it. Okay, we're recording, perfect. Okay, I'm on tiny profanity. <laughs> so, how is the move into your new house going? <laughs> well, I don't think I'm ever going to move again. I learned that I'm better at organizing than I thought because I didn't realize how much stuff I got. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, now that we're packing it, it's kind of like, it's a little chaotic and I don't know where anything is, um, but <laughs> it's good. It's actually forcing us to think about what items we want to put into our new home and what items actually kind of matter to us and what we can let go of. So it's been a really good purge, I think. So I'm yeah. happy with that. Uh, you know, it's our first home together. So I, I'm just ecstatic. I just can't wait to get there. I'm really like, like antsy when I get there so I can start doing stuff, you know? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, how would you say moving into a house with your partner is different than like moving into an apartment together for the first time? I think the first time we moved in together, and this goes for a lot of new couples, you as, you're coming together as two separate people. And so that's two people with two different stuff, like a whole lot of stuff that <laughs> means something to you and you're like smushing it together in one probably small little space at the time. And I think that, you know, you kind of, you're still trying to find who you are as a couple and also how that looks as an individual um, in a home because you're sharing all this stuff now. Mm -hmm. um, it differs now because my partner and I have a collection of things that we've built together mm -hmm. um, and it feels kind of like we're moving into a house as one person versus moving into a space as two separate people kind of like trying to noodle our ways in together. <laughs> you know, it's a little chaotic. And I also think it's different because when you're younger, in your 20s, you're still trying to figure out who you who you are, what does that, how does that translate into a home? And also the hand-me-downs from the parents come <laughs> a lot. And so your house is just riddled with like things you've gotten from grandma or mom or, you know, and like, you know, your whole family's always passing things on or old plates or, you know, pictures on the wall. And so you kind of over time start to weave through that and figure out what it is that, what kind of style that you are and what you want to see in your home. So we're kind of moving into a new house this time with a better understanding of what that looks like. Um, so it helps us kind of structure what we want to do. Um, but I love that. I feel like you summed it up so perfectly. And like, even my experience of like moving in with my partner for the first time, it's like, I just want all of his stuff in a box. And I just want to like <laughs> shove it away. <laughs> like he's pretty, he doesn't really care, but like his one decor, decor idea was like, he's like, I have this really big old Toronto Maple Leafs flag and let's just put it on the wall. And I was like, we're not going to do that. <laughs> disgusting <laughs> I have I have uh, advice for that okay yes please because I don't know what to do about it and it, the funny thing was is the when I was first moving in with my partner I was the problem because I was like a super nerd I had all these Batman posters and like you know like nerdy stuff and he was not that he was like a hockey guy and I was like not a sports person so I was like how do you bring a nerdy person and like a sports person together mm -hmm. what I realized is that it's really good to give each other your own space so one space in your par apartment mm -hmm. for him so like maybe it's like a desk you each have a desk or like he has a little space where he gets to put his knickknacks and then that's it like that's it <laughs> Cut we, had, <laughs> we, had a, we had an office space and what I did was I created shelves above the in the office space and there were shelves above each of our desks mm -hmm. um, and so he was allowed to put whatever he wanted 
nicely decorated by me right um, <laughs> on <his> shelves <laughs> and then I put whatever I wanted on my shelves but that we found a way to like kind of unify those two shelves mm -hmm. um but you know I always think it's like you have to find compromise you know yeah. and you have to decide what is important to him what is important to you mm -hmm. you know and then find those compromises you know like maybe once a year he gets to hang the flag or when you know yeah kind of, was it a toronto maple leaf yes. mm -hmm. maybe <laughs> just when toronto maple leaves are playing then he gets to put it up and then it comes down yeah it comes yeah. down you know? <laughs> maybe if they win then he can put it up so i don't think that'll ever happen yeah maybe so at least a year you know <laughs> Per year, where you get to hang the flag, you know, and that's it. Mm -hmm. That's it. Fuck it off. <laughs> or you know what would be a really good compromise if he loves the idea of the Toronto Maple Leafs? Maybe there's a way that you can kind of mold or DIY your decor sense with what he loves. So, mm -hmm. for example, maybe you make like a really cool rust, like kind of like wood sign that can live on the wall or some kind of DIY art that kind of plays into that world. So yeah. he feels like he's getting what he wants, but you're also getting what you want. So yeah. like, what does that look like? Yeah, that's such a good idea. Cause like you can make stuff look cool. It doesn't have to be like old and dirty. There's just no need for that. <laughs> There's this really cool, um, like a uh, wood transfer that you can do. So you take a picture of like a Toronto Maple Leafs and you can transfer it onto a piece of wood or, you know, you can create some kind of like kind of collage piece, you know, or I don't know, decoupage, whatever. It's like, yeah. you know, maybe it's just a leaf that gets played into something bigger but yeah you can find those solutions like there's a fun creative solutions to help make two people happy there always is i love that for your house that you're moving into what are some diys that we can look forward to i think the diys that i'm going to be focusing on are budget-friendly solutions so 100 percent i don't got no monies okay <laughs> I just spent all my money on my house. So I like nothing. I've got pennies. So I'm definitely, and I think that goes for every new homeowner. Like we ain't got no money. So mm -hmm. we're definitely going to be doing a lot of budget friendly solutions, which I think a lot of people can relate to. Yeah. Um, and finding ways to give my, feed my soul that high end look mm -hmm. with on like a sham, like on a beer budget look. So I want like my house to feel like champagne, but I'm going to be doing it on my DIY beer budget. And I think <laughs> that I can, I think, I hope, and I know I can do it. I think you can too. I have a hundred percent faith in you. <laughs> I do too. But I also think beyond that, um, you know, we are going to be renovating our home mm -hmm. and I want to make sure that I'm giving the most honest storyline with what I share. I think a lot of times like on TV, we, you know, in lifestyle TV, we get to see such a small glimpse of what actually happens in renos. You know, we see the highs and the lows on TV, but what's in between. And that's kind of what I want to share with my audience is like every little piece of what it took to really get my home to where I want it to be and what, mm -hmm. what it took and how much did it cost to transform that, you yeah. know, and that could come down to, you know, what did it actually cost to break down a wall? I made mean, sure, you, you know, you just need two hands and a mallet. <laughs> But what does that cost actually look like? What goes into it? You know, um, I wish I wish I had more understanding of that world and I can't, I'm excited to share that part of it too, because I think there are a lot of people in my position who never thought I could knock down a wall. And so what does that take? And I want to show people how to do that. And, you know, hopefully, hopefully we can all celebrate the world of DIY together. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I love that. I think too, like as a viewer, whenever I'm watching, it doesn't even matter. Like it could be lifestyle or it could just be like someone making a candle or whatever. I feel yeah. like, especially on YouTube, I want to see I like everything. I'm like, show me everything. Show me how you were feeling that morning when you woke up. Like show me the coffee you drank before you like started doing stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, I feel, I totally agree. Like I don't just want to see people like crying one night and then like the whole thing's done the next day. It's like give yeah. me more content. <laughs> I think nowadays on YouTube, we are, 
or not just on YouTube. I just think, you know, with everything that's happened in 2020, Mm -hmm. I think we are so craving authenticity. We are so craving, you know, seeing true emotion, true, uh, true behind the scenes of what other people and how other people are living Mm -hmm. because I don't know. It's been, it's like, we need to relate to each other. And I think that's what people love about YouTube. And what I realized about on my channel is like, people are always saying, I really love seeing you mess up because it makes mm-hmm. me feel less bad when I mess up. Yeah. And, you know, that was, that really hit me hard, you know, cause I think we always try to show a very glossy version of ourselves. Yeah. And, you know, I think, you know, seeing you wallpaper the wrong way. I think that that's okay. And I love, I like that you weren't afraid to show that because that's an honest view into what it's like for a lot of people. We're going to make those mistakes, you know, and I think that's good. And I think if you own that mistake and you say, I made a mistake, but here's how I solved it. <laughs> yeah. That's what all people want to know because they're making the same mistakes as you. Mm-hmm. So how did you fix it? Are you going to fix it? Are you I think so. It? Yeah. I have a lot of extra wallpaper, so I think I'll just jump in there and like adjust it a little bit. Um, yeah, I guess I've never looked at it that way either. Like during 2020, since like we can't really be with people in the same way, I guess, cause I have been watching a lot more YouTube channels and stuff like that. So maybe it's because I'm like craving that intimacy and like friendship with people. So I'm like trying to recreate it or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. I think it's so important, you know, it's like you want people, you're already putting yourself on camera, you're putting yourself out there and you want people to see an honest version of what that looked like. And I think that's nice that you're bringing people through that and showing them the highs and the lows, whatever yeah. that may be, you mm-hmm. know, people are craving that. And so that's, and that's exactly what I'm excited to show in my home is like those highs and lows and the honesty around it, even just mm-hmm. the ideas of planning the space is stressful. Like I'm stressed, yes. <laughs> you know, I like, I don't, I've never lived in a house so big. I've never had two floors. Oh my God. That's floors. crazy to me. <laughs> I know. It's like, what is, what is stairs? Like I don't, I've never owned a pair of stairs in my home. So I'm like, oh my God, not only do I have like a whole house to now figure out what is, what is going to go in it, but it's like, there's two floors. And I'm like, oh my God, I have two. Listen, big revelation for me was the fact that I have two bathrooms. Oh my goodness. I know. That's I know. cute. Two it's bathrooms. a guest bathroom and one's like the personal, that's fancy to me. I know. I was so excited. I was like, oh my God, I've never had two bathrooms before. Yeah. And so it's like, when my partner's like, you need to get out of the bathroom, I'm like, go. <laughs> To the other bathroom. Go to the guest bathroom, sir. <laughs> huge. I love that. Oh, it's like the little things, you know? Yes. Oh, yes. I cannot wait until I have a bathroom again. Like, I'm so excited for that day. <laughs> yeah. I know. I, I haven't had a bathtub in a long time either. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. I cannot. I'm so excited to see your house. Oh, my goodness. It's going to be a haul. Like, <laughs> It scares me that like, you know, understanding that what I'm walking into and then I can't do everything in one day. Right. That is scary. I mean, I'm a girl that loves some purple, but my (laughs) entire bathroom is lavender purple, Mm -hmm. like 360. Oh, wow. 360 ceiling, like, like, well, okay. Not the floor. Okay. Maybe not the floor. (laughs) <laughs> but, but it might as well have been for how yeah. scary it is it's just like there's a, there's one place I'm going to be tackling like very soon because I'm like I can handle you know like like some bad wallpaper here or there yeah but I can't <laughs> I can't handle walking <laughs> to the bathroom every day and being like I don't feel good in here you know <laughs> yeah this yeah. is my last place. So, yeah, <laughs> like little things like that are going to be a little scary to have to show people but I think yeah. that's yeah what did you think of the first episode? Oh, I, well, I loved it. As I said, um, as I said before, I think I love your honesty going into it. I love the story that you're telling because I think it is so relatable to so many people, you know, bringing together two lives and then how do you navigate that? And I love how bold you are because the colors that you've chosen your home, they, I love that they tell a story, mm-hmm. but they're not the most like, conventional colors that people would yes. use. Mm-hmm. You know, I was going, girl, that's bold. Or like, wow, that's a 
bright color, but that so encapsulates your personality because mm -hmm. you are such a bright person. So seeing that, you know, you pick these bright colors that I love that you're taking bold choices and then going with bold wallpaper on the, on the <laughs> I just think that all DIYers, like you encompass exactly what DIYers should be, is mm -hmm. people who are not afraid to get messy and they're fearless with the colors they're putting on their wall, the wallpaper they put up. Because <laughs> at the end of the day, like I always tell people this, paint can isn't permanent you can paint yeah. anything again if you don't like it mm -hmm. i think you just have to take some chances and explore it's kind of like moving into a new home is like kind of a new relationship it's like yes you're in a new relationship with the person but you're also in a relationship with your home you know mm -hmm. you kind of have to date a little while <laughs> some colors date some styles before you really find you know, like your cozy little happy place that you decide, okay, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to work this out. We're going to make this work for us. So I think that you guys like being bold in your space is so fun. And I loved seeing him a part of your journey because I think <laughs> that is just so what it's like, you know, yeah. you know, it's always one person pushing the project <laughs> forward and the other person sad that they're there to have to help. Yes. Yeah, he's definitely like a grumpy old man vibe. And I feel like I'm just like, la, la, la. <laughs> No, it's fun. I think it's great. I think your, your enthusiasm is infectious and it makes, I think you're going to make other people want to take chances in their home. So don't Thanks. be afraid to show that side and own your decisions. Yes. <laughs> I feel like I just asked this question so I can get compliments. So thank you for that. <laughs> I'm like, yes, please tell me more. <laughs> oh, um, but don't be afraid to show the mistakes is all I'm yeah. saying because I think people want to see. I know that like, yes, Coral is full of experts, but I think we're mm -hmm. craving authenticity of like what, what you go through because that's what everybody is going through. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. Know? There will be so. many mistakes, I'm sure, to come that I don't even know about yet, but they're, <laughs> they're going to be in there. <laughs> don't, be afraid to, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like I always, my like biggest motto is from a fictional character on a, a, a children's television show when I was growing up, which was Magic School Bus, where Miss Frizzle was always like, get messy, make mistakes. Mm -hmm. Because I just think that that encompasses everything that the DIY world is. You can't be afraid to get messy. You can't be afraid to make mistakes and mm -hmm. just have fun. Like, you know, it's supposed to be fun. And if yeah. you're not having fun, then why are we doing it? You know? <laughs> is there any advice you can give me for DIYing in a small space? Because my house is really small. So I feel like any little floor space, I'm like, what can I do with this small piece? So I would love to hear if you have any advice for me. My biggest advice to any homeowners in small spaces when it comes to the DIY world is multi-function baby <laughs> everything should serve more than one purpose and and i'm not talking about decor like decor is a whole other world of diy um which i can touch on but when it comes to the big ticket items that you're putting in your home tables couches side tables the things that are going to take up a lot of space mm -hmm. everything needs to serve two functions so it's kind of like you have to ask yourself okay i'm about to put this desk this giant desk in the middle of my living room, is it serving more than one purpose for me? Because if it's not, I don't like, you kind of have to rethink which item you're going to put in there. So, you know, like getting a Murphy desk that, you know, can fold down maybe to give you some space is always a great yeah. solution. I have been shoving a lot of stuff under our bed. Cause like, I just don't know where to put it. So I'm like, there you go. <laughs> Yeah, we're like pushing things in closets and then like hopefully closing the door. Yeah, yeah like, don't look in there. <laughs> but I, I know that feeling. So <laughs> yeah, it's, I had to learn that the hard way here too. It's like coming up with items that are going to solve two purposes. Like how am I going to store things? Mm -hmm. How does that solve that problem? And how does it like function in multiple ways? Yeah. Like as an example, actually, um, behind me, I don't know if we can see. Mm -hmm. um, let me see if I do this. So behind me, um, I have a table and um, there's some benches behind the table that I mm -hmm. DIY'd. And the reason why I went with bench system, one was because it offered me more space. Um, so yeah. I could have the desk or the table in when I wasn't 
when we didn't have guests over. Mm -hmm. But on top of that, it was, we could bring those benches out here when we had guests and it offers extra seating. So Mm -hmm. that's like two, another example of like something functioning in two ways. Yes, we have a beautiful dining area now, but also we had extra seating when guests came over. Mm -hmm. So that is really smart. Because yeah. I feel like, especially, well, I mean, I don't have any parties anymore, but when I did, there's like, everyone sit on the floor. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? Yeah, it's like those nesting tables, too, that can also, I've seen, like, you can turn nesting tables that are, like, cushions on one side, and then you mm-hmm. turn, flip them over, and then the, it's like a side table then, suddenly. Amazing. I love yeah. a good poop, you know? <laughs> yeah. So it's like. Know, right now it's a side table but then when yeah. you come over suddenly it's a seat you know there's a great multi-function purpose for something yes so, <laughs> like it's kind of hard to re reprogram your brain to think that way but mm-hmm. it's so important in small spaces all the time yeah. because or that or you just end up feeling like you're like am I a hoarder <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're like why do I have so much stuff <laughs> It's hard. It's really hard, but you figure it out over time. So my last question is, do you have any relationship advice about living with a partner for the first time? Uh, my partner would be like curling over right now. Because like, oh, really? What is that advice? Do you have any issues? Mm-hmm. Um, I think my biggest piece of advice is compromise. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, over time, you're two different people. Yeah. And and you have to find your way in making two different people kind of work in one space. And it's totally possible. Um, I actually did an exercise with my partner and he hated it, but I actually found it really helped mm-hmm. both of us. So I always, I, what I did was I made him go on Pinterest and I asked him to pin me five photos that he felt represented what he like what he likes in home decor. I said, go find five photos for me that says, this is what I wish my home looked like. Yeah. And I did the same. And then we put them on one, one little uh, pin page mm-hmm. and seeing it all in one area really helped us dictate kind of like, oh, what does he like versus what I like and helped us find kind of a marriage in between that. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, I know that you really like, you know, rustic things. So, but he doesn't know how to say I like rustic things, right? right? (laughs) Women don't know these things. They don't read home decor magazines like us ladies do all the time. That's just a natural thing. So yeah. for him to verbally say that will never happen. So by showing, for, by him showing me photos of things that he liked, it helped me understand him um, in his decor style a lot better. So we were able to like find items that, you know, would speak to both of us, you know, have a happy medium um, mm-hmm. between the space. So, cause like I was always very like farmhouse and he was always very modern. Like he likes right. like, cold cements and like you know like very clean lines where I was like really messy and eclectic um so us kind of finding that balance in that world was a lot it made us both happier at the end of the day understanding what each other wanted in a home yeah that's that that's a really good idea actually because I didn't even think because you're right like the way that they communicate about stuff like this is just like completely different they just I don't know (laughs) Like, I think he told me he really liked, um, he really liked wood or something. I was like, what? <laughs> okay. <laughs> right? Like, they don't know. So it's like, if he pins a picture, you can ask him, what about this photo do you like? And if he goes, oh, I really liked, like, the wood desk or I like the color of the wood. You're like, aha. Okay. Yeah. So now I know that you, you know, you might be more of like a rustic guy or maybe he's like more into mid-century modern because right. of like the type of furniture that he's gravitating towards but you can start to see that when he starts to visually put that out there right so yeah it did it helped us a lot um but most of the time he's like oh, okay. <laughs> yeah <laughs> and I'm like okay well I'm gonna be painting our, our chairs pink <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, oh, great, great. Like, yeah. but I, you know, I think we have to put them, take them into account, you know, yes. even if they don't care because mm-hmm. um, it's their right. home too and they want to feel good about it. And your home's supposed to be your happy place, like your, your place of, of comfort and the place you feel good in, especially now that we're spending so much time in our homes. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's, it's important to find that balance. Yeah. I love that. That was such good advice. Yeah, so good luck. 
you see how that goes. That could be a whole episode of you trying to get him to like find out his decor style. Like you like hold up pictures. Okay, what about this do you love? Yeah. What about this do you love or hate? You know, and then and then you guys can like find your whole like way of, you know. Yeah, totally like do a PowerPoint presentation or something. I don't even think he knows what Pinterest is. So that would be interesting in itself to like so well, that's people always ask me, oh, well, how do you find your decor sense? I'm like, I don't know. But what I, the advice that I have been given from mm -hmm. many people is that, you know, we're all pinners. We're all Pinterest yeah. people. We yeah. all have a bajillion boards of different things that we love. Right. Go, go there and start mm -hmm. looking through all of your pins because you're going to start to see a trend. Yes. A trend like everything that you love, whether it's color, whether it's style, and that's going to help you dictate kind of the things that you put in your home too, because you're, you don't even know your brain knows what you like better than you, than you know, and sometimes because yeah. I go through my pins and I was like, Oh, you know, like, Oh, I am this kind of person. Cause I did like this photo over and over and over and over <laughs> again. So it was like, yeah. Oh, I really need to reflect on that because I think I'm telling myself that I am this kind of farmhouse person, even though I have purple hair and I'm wearing pom-pom shirts and like, you know, and I love, I embrace color in my job. Yeah. But in home, I, it was hard for me to realize that I'm not that. I am, um, I love dark colors. I love like, I like white walls and dark colors and I'm more like farmhouse meets mid-century modern. Yeah. And that was, that was a really hard uh, pill for me to swallow. Cause I was like, mm -hmm. I thought I loved color. You yeah. know, I thought I was going to be one of those people that had like, a teal couch on like a crazy wallpapered wall. And I'm like, no, I'm not that. <laughs> so it was like, yeah, do going through doing the Pinterest challenge yes. was, um, was a real good reflection of who I am. I, mean, I always like wanted to pull away from having so much stuff on my walls. Cause I was like, Oh, it's just like more to dust and clean. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's like over time, my partner's like a minimalist, like doesn't want anything in her home. <laughs> just like, a lawn chair <laughs> honestly he wants like he wants a couch a mm -hmm. tv and a table like that's <laughs> that's, that's how he functions mm -hmm. um so yeah uh, we've been I've been pulling back the things that I put in my home because I think he feels happier again finding that compromise because I'm right. an eclectic person uh -huh. so I've been collecting things that mean something to me more mm -hmm. and keeping those things out versus having a whole kit and caboodle of stuff. Right. Um, yeah. And letting it, go. So. It feels like you replaced that with like more plants. I feel like you're like, okay, nothing on the wall. Here's another plant. <laughs> actually, I think I did. I, I think that is actually the fact I did replace it with plants. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You're like, perfect. No problem. Like <laughs> it got to a point where like, I, if I came home and he was home already, I have to leave the plant in the house or in the car and then like wait till he was doing something and run out and go get it and bring it into the house because I didn't notice he's in the house. Like a new plant is not something he notices, but if I bring it in, it's kind of like another plant. I can't deal with the game. <laughs> so I wait till he's doing something. We're like went to the washroom and then I run up to the car and go get the plant, bring it inside and plunk it down. And I'm like, oh yeah, it's been there for weeks. Yes, like, like don't you pay attention to anything? Oh, no, 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 no. I'm like, no, it's been there for weeks. And I'm like, I'm like, are you like yeah. just fine. Thanks, Danny. I appreciate thank you so much for doing this with me. I feel like I honestly have learned a lot more than I knew before. <laughs> I hope so, or that or I babbled for an hour, but who knows? <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you so much. And like, you made me feel so much more confident too, even about my mistakes. So I think that was also a good thing that I got from this. <laughs> Absolutely. It's so, it's okay to make mistakes and that's how you learn. And that's mm -hmm. how you have fun and try new things. So make all the mistakes. Just yes. do it. I think it's just like, just get up and do it and don't mm -hmm. be afraid. Be that yeah. fearless DIYer that you should be, you know? Yeah. This, I like, this feels so nice. I feel so good about this now. <laughs> hey, good. Inspired DIYers all around. No, it's funny, like, you said you were going to talk to experts, but at the same time, like, I don't feel like I'm an expert either. Mm -hmm. You know, I think I've, you become an expert inherently because you've done th certain things so many times. Yeah. That, it's funny that people look to me as an expert, but I never feel that way. I always, I've always felt like somebody 
just like you, who's just going through the motions and figuring it out as you go. But I think the, the true key to the DIY world is just having the ability to want to get your hands dirty and don't be afraid to get messy, make mistakes, and just have fun. That's the answer. That's the answer to DIY. <laughs>